Today I'm sharing a new idea that's absolutely power packed with colour. They're watercolour strips, they're stunning and I think they'll really jazz up your journal. The key feature of these strips is this swatch right down the middle and it's the colour combinations that I've chosen that really make the whole strip pop. I've added collage on each of them as you can see just on the side so you still get to see the colour right down the middle and also I added some optional stitching for texture. This is part of the Fast Flow Stitching collaboration. I've got three different colourways to share with you today so you can pick one that suits whatever your journal or piece of ephemera is and I also obviously have the process steps as usual along with about 35 others in Pinterest so take a screenshot, let's do it. The first thing we want to do to make these lovely watercolour strips is gather our supplies around us to make life really easy today and also in particular cut down some strips of paper that we can put those lovely swatches on. So these are the strips of paper that I've been using and they come from this pad. So the one I chose to use is called Mixed Media came in 60 sheets from Arteza and it's 180 grams, so 110 pounds. So not the lightest of papers, but also certainly not card. And you want it to be thin enough that you can add the sewing to if you want to. So around me here on my desk, I, as I said, I've been making a few of these, they're quite addictive. And I have used my watercolour paints from Arteza here, my messy ones and my metallic, my metallic watercolour paints. So also on my desk here just to show the kind of supplies I've been using. I've got some words and text, some black and white labels. I've got some alternatives if you don't have digital labels just on the left here in a minute. I've got some gold paint. I have got a beautiful effect to share with you today by using these. Again you don't have to have the gold, you can still make these and make some beautiful watercolour strips without I've got my basic watercolour paint from Kuritaki. There's my journal. I got out and I have used a bit of ribbon, some autumnal leaves. I've got some flowers I've cut out of book pages. I've stamped some leaves. I've got some punches here, which would be great for adding some interesting collage. A bit of book page, which I'll use for collage. I've got some suggestions for images to use if you don't want to use things from books so I will just very men very quickly mention these later and they're very affordable so I want to focus on my channel on things that are affordable for us all to do so we can all join in. In that little bag there I've got my alternative to digital labels so my suggestion is if you can find a children's dictionary which typically has a larger font let's just see if I can show you that these are great for cutting out words and basically for those labels I've been integrating nice bold font words and little phrases into those watercolour strips and they're really a great decorative element. I've got some new paints there I'm going to play with. I've not used them yet but I will report back. So those are metallic gouache. I think those would work well in this project. I've got a few bugs here I've used on one of the colourways. There's the, the buggy example. Basically lots of fun, lots of things to play with, so let's just crack on. So the three colourways that I want to share with you today are the classic green and orange and in fact in this collaboration, this fast flow stitching collaboration that this video is a part of, we were asked to integrate these sort of autumnal colours. So I've got a colour swatch here that I'll do in the oranges and greens, very classic, and that was the one I used to convert into this watercolour strip with bugs. I like them. Insects. I've got a colourway around purple and red, so very royal, and I've integrated the gold into that too. And when I added my collage, this is what it looked like. So I've added some extra purple elements and I've pulled out images that have got that bluey purple in the background here. You can obviously add any images you like, just go with the flow, have fun. And then the third one is teal and orange. So a gorgeous combination. And that was the one that I used to add some 
coordinating colours in these beautiful butterflies in different sizes and I think that's absolutely stunning too. So I thought what I'd do today is show you how I make the colour combinations in each of them, so all three, but I'm not going to go down the whole strip of each three, but I thought it was important to show you not just one but maybe a little bit of a couple of the others, the two others as well. So I've got my paints to the side of me, I've got a thick brush and I've got another thinner brush and the technique here is get quite a lot of water onto your thick brush. Let's move these out of the way. So we'll go for the start with teal and orange and we're going to work down here just adding blocks of the colours that we like but we're going to vary them just a little bit so that there's interest trying not to get the two same colours next to each other as we go. I'll show you how to integrate the gold if you have it. Load up your brush, think teal and orange, and dive in to your paint palette. I want quite a lot of water on my brush, that was one of the things I learned when I had a play. And I'm not too worried about the shape, I'm just sort of thinking about a brick with rounded corners. And plenty of water, and this is why you want slightly thicker paper. Don't mind a blob of it sitting there. What I do is I take a narrower brush, I need to get my gold paint going here, and I pick up either some of this metallic gold and I touch and just sort of drag it a bit. You do need plenty of water to let, let it all move and then I just let that shimmer do whatever it wants to do across that little blob. Then I probably should have a different brush but keeping it very wet I'll dive into my orange, we'll get going straight away on the contrast of the two colours, plenty of water and the key here is not to touch the swatch area that you've already painted. There's a lot of colour in that isn't there, keep the water in there as well and like I said you don't have to have gold so I might go back with my little brush and I might have blue just floating around in there and if you've got plenty of water then they'll just it'll just start to blend across and fill in and make for an interesting effect. So with my teal and orange I might have a bit of the reds, I might have some of the yellow ochres, I might have, I might have a tiny bit of purple but the idea is that you broadly stick to some of those colours that we've chosen, the teal and the orange. So something a bit different. Again, plenty of water in it. You see this one's just a little bit duller. It's more of a pumpkin colour, that's very pretty. And I might go back to some of my gold, just to get some of that. And I'll use the water that's in the swatch, add the metallic. And when that dries, if you have got any of this gold, you get the most luxurious effect. So why don't we get a bit more of the blue going in here because like I said I want contrast. I'm actually mixing, I think for this one, I've got teal but I've mixed a darker blue in it. Isn't that gorgeous? Quite exciting playing with colour in this way I think so. Maybe we could add some orange into that one. I don't want everything just to become browny purple but let's see, maybe at this end. I tend to pick an end and just drag it into the middle a bit, and let the water do its thing. I might have a bit of gold on that one too. And then sometimes I might just go for the gold. Because if I've got a teal and orange swatch set, I think gold fits as well. Now the gold paint here doesn't have as much pigment in it. So what I could do is maybe just dip slightly into a red in my paint palette and mix it with some orange and sort of reverse what we're doing. So rather than having the metallic gold floating across the surface, I'll let the just plain watercolour float across like that. And I have to beware because I'm right-handed. I tend to start with my extra second colour on the right-hand side. and I want to vary that as well. I feel like I need a bit more of the plain teal. So I'll go back to that, keeping the contrast going, that's what I like. You don't need to go all the way to the edge, but try not to let them shrink to being little circles in the middle. I might be naughty and add a tiny bit of purple just to float on top. 
not too much, but just a little bit. This actually reminds me of some of the doodles I did ages ago. I was inspired by CC Creations, it's Creations CC, do you know her? And I did some little swatches in a book and some doodles on top. I really enjoyed that. In fact, what I might do on this one is add a bit of gold because I think purple. Oh, that's beautiful. And I'll just do a few swatches of the other colourways, which are purple and red and the classic orange and green. I'm very excited to see what the others in this collaboration are doing. And I should mention who else is in it. It's organised by Louise and all of these other individuals are participating. I have done another video as part of this collaboration last week, but I was so much enjoying playing with my sewing machine again, I thought I would create another project. So definitely check out all of the videos by Rachel, by Helen, by Andrea, Tina, Margaret, Shana, Barbara, Gail, Tracy and Louise Heinzel. I'm sure you know many, many of them, if not all of them. Their videos are absolutely fantastic. Let's do the purple and red, which will end up looking a bit like this. I'll just do a few of the colours just to give you that sense of, of how to move off. And then obviously using whatever feeling you have to put colour on the paper. So I'm starting with a loaded brush with some purple. It's a very royal colour, isn't it? Here's my brick. Fill it in. Nice fat paintbrush, plenty of water and I will go for my gold. Let's go at one end. That's running really nicely because I've got plenty of water on it. While that's moving I'll go for some really lovely strong red. Although this isn't the classic red, orange sort of colours of autumn, I did feel that it had something about it. And I fancied doing some of these colours as well. So fill in my brick. That's a nice raspberry colour, isn't it? Or maybe cranberry. Cranberry. And I think what I'm going to do is put purple into that rather than gold. And just let that run across. And then I might in this mix in a tiny bit of blue. So cheating a bit. It's not all just purple, red, purple, red. Plenty of water. The idea is that you've got a dominant two colours and I might allow a third one to just sneak in there. So plenty of water, fill it in. Don't let these little bricks of colour touch each other because you don't want the colours to mix within. That's really gorgeous. Back to one of my golds, absolutely stunning. So I don't want to convert back to teal and orange. I think what I might do is introduce not gold on top of that, but purple, just to remind the page that the colour palette is indeed purple and red. And I feel I want some really bold red, so let me get my paintbrush very clean, load up the red, need to be careful that I don't have too much pigment in it because then it just shows as an absolute block of colour. I want it to be a bit washy. That's better. So I've got my purple and red showing through a bit better now. And I think I'm just going to add a bit of yellow to float around in that. So again, you don't always have to have the gold. And I feel like we need to go back to the core, which is purple. So you get the feeling this is the red and purple one. And for the third one I'm going to go for the classic oranges and greens, those gorgeous colours that you see that fade and turn into crunchy leaves on the ground as you walk. Get some green down. It's quite watery isn't it? Let's get a bit, bit more pigment on that one. That's fine. Don't worry about having too much pigment on. It allows you to see the different depths of pigment as it dries. That's beautiful. Get that on and let it float across. I'm going to go straight in for some orange. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? That is such a pumpkin colour. There we go. I think I get a tick from 
Louise for that, what do you think? Let some gold flow across that. I'm just touching the paper so that the paint comes off it and sits in small pools. Love this one. Get some gold in there and I think I'll do one without gold. Oh, absolutely stunning. Which is your favourite of the three? Let me know in a comment. And I've got basically whatever colourway I want now to decorate with collage. So that's what we'll have a go at doing. So it's time to do the collage on the strip that we picked. So teal and orange. And I thought what I would do is just show you the toys that I've got that I've pulled out to play with on this particular strip. I've got a, and this is in no particular order, I've got this lovely washi roll with text on it and of course those I think pretty key components which is labels with or bits of book page with bold font and that for me is quite a characteristic of these watercolour strips. So you can see how that features and you look at the text as you wander down with your eye but you're also seeing all those other design elements and the colour. I've pulled out some ribbon that I haven't used for ages but I did think that those are gorgeous colours for autumn and then I've got some items on my desk here, the book page that I added some paint to just to bring it into the colour palette. I've got some orange paper pieces, I've got some teal and I've got some offcuts from punching out, here we go, on this, just cheap scrapbook paper. That's what's left when I punched out some leaves. And what else do we have? I found this in my box, a gorgeous roll of teal washi. That's the washi tape shop with some gold on. And because I want the focal points to be butterflies, I've got my tub of butterflies ready here. I might have to cut some more out, but I might have some ready on the top. I've got a few in the right colours, I think. So let's go for it. Let's do collaging up and down the strip, avoiding most of the middle. So glue stick, I think, for this one, not a liquid glue. And I think I'll start at the bottom here and work up. It's just the way my mind is thinking. I want to pick up from my little pile of labels here some of the text. I'm going to run the glue just down one side because I want to build out on the side. Is that the right way? Do we want it? Oh, I'm going to go... I've already got glue on, so that's a bit of a, a mess. It'll dry. I think I want the text that way. And I'm going to put it on so that some of it is jutting out over the side. So what we do to begin with is build out the width of our strip. So we started with two inches, but it is going to be wider. And I don't really spend too long thinking about what's going on. I just sort of work my way up the strip and maybe sometimes they are vertical and sometimes they can be horizontal. Vary it a bit. There we go. Something there and we're just starting to cover up a little bit of the white space as we do it and I'm not worried about the white space because one of the steps later will give us the opportunity to fill in as much of that as we want to. I quite like these really long thin ones. This is a tiny piece, you can probably not see it, but it was what was left over at the bottom of a plant when I cut a, a flower out of a plant book and I just liked the font. So that's not a, a digital. So let's maybe have that there, just nudging up to that label. See if we can tuck it under, yes we can and just keep going, adding a few, make it wider, cover up a bit. That might go above the top right. I'm just going to jut it out again. I've got something here in a different shape and I really like numbers, so doing really well. I can put some in the middle, but the idea is, having done all the swatching, that we're not going to cover it all up. I hope you can roughly see what I'm doing. It's obviously a long thin strip so it's hard to get it all on camera and give you a close-up at the same time. So we've got quite a few on there. Might do a tiny bit more. I'm going to come back at, right at the end 
and add some extra. So not to worry if we think we're missing some areas and we haven't got enough. I'm just going to hold back a bit to maybe have something that's nice, isn't it? It works. Do we go? Yeah, maybe there. So I've got some labels on. So let's just have a check of our process steps. We are in the decoration phase and I'm going to add some coloured paper now. We've done some of the text. Add some coloured coloured paper and then maybe some of those washi and some book pages. So coloured paper. Found this which looks absolutely perfect as teal. It's all about tiny pieces this so it is an opportunity to really use up some of what you've got and not too much thought needed. I think the more you add these core colours and stick to the palette the more exciting it gets too. Don't want to cover up too much of my word, I'll go underneath that one. Got some space up here. Like that. This is handmade paper I think and it's when it tears it has that fluffy edge which is really pretty and I'm going to build out some orange so I didn't know what to do with this paper I've had it for ages it's one of those let's give it the edge a bit of roughness and it's not so not so tidy where should we put that I think I'm going to start oh gosh that is really strong I have to start a little bit here we don't have to cover all of the edges. I'm not saying we need to iron out all of the straight lines. But I think as we add, let me cut that one in two, we add some of these colours and break it out, it just becomes something really, really special. And I would use these in lots of different ways. I have done, I had a supply and I've used a lot up. I've used them as belly bands on journal pages when I've done collaborations like Junk Journal July. And I'm going to move on to book page, teeny tiny pieces now. Um, I've used it, just taken sort of a couple of inches and added it to the front of pockets. That's really nice. Add something very, very special. There we go. I like the pieces that I get from a book page to have the text on. So I probably don't want the edges. I'm overlapping. So I've got little clusters, really build out those layers. Great opportunity to use up your teeny tiny scraps. Lovely. Bit down here, bring it together. I think so. Okay. And then I'm going to add, because I like it, just a few little pieces from this because it's got text on it again. Choose no, I'm not putting it next to the book page because that's already got text on it. Let's go there over a corner, and it's see-through, which is great because I can still see, still see the text through. If I put it over one of those labels, maybe on a corner. This is so much about the process of doing it and then you just get something adorable when you're done. Where should we go? Up here. I don't want to cover up too much of that gorgeous gold. And then I'm going to choose, this is a new one, but look at the colour. Gorgeous teal. I can't resist some of that. It's got gold foil on it. Of course I need to do a bit of ripping on the edges. So break down some of that, balance it up at the top, give that a bit of a rippy edge, there we go. The colour is just gorgeous, I absolutely love it. Very free flowing this project, very good for forgetting the world and escaping I think. So having added the background what I want to do is add a focal point. So on the one that I've already progressed I added a few different butterflies. So I've pulled out some from my little pot. So I had a delve into my pot. You can see I keep all sorts. I have ones on vellum, white paper, 
images to cut out, images I've already cut out. I've chosen, oh they're lovely aren't they, there's a nice big one too, ooh, look at that. I've chosen four here, let's stick to what I've, I've been thinking about and I want them bent and I want them just distributed up and down my watercolour strip and I like these, I've chosen them because of the obviously the colour palette in each of them. I want the wings to stick up so I'm literally going to pick a spot, maybe not covering up too much of the text behind but I've got on this one for example quite a lot of teal showing and I've got the washi tape still visible there. I want to distribute them quite well so that they cover the whole of the strip. I also want to mix up the sizes if I can with these. I think different sizes is also very helpful. I've got some gold peeping out behind there so that works well. And let's get this gorgeous, look at this, orange and teal, orange and blue. Blue on the back there. Maybe that could be a bit more to the left. I've still got my text sticking out here. And, oh, that's lovely. I can see the washi tape there, which complements this one. I would normally go for an odd number, but I feel that, feel that this is fine. And, of course, what you can do is vary whatever it is that you add as focal points. And I've done that. There really is no limit. You can do whatever you like using the images you have, be they digital or maybe from book pages. I said I'd mention some really affordable images if that's what you want to use. So just really briefly, this is one page from a set that came out very recently from Tracy Fox. I really like them because obviously they've got that beautiful autumnal component to them. Look at the colours. But they've also been shrunk to put two on a page, which gives me... For something like this, or a project like this, if you don't want to use butterflies, some images in pretty much the right size. I don't like them much bigger than this. I really like this leaf. I love the little squirrel. I like the branches here and leaves in this gorgeous russety brown. And obviously I love the pumpkin. And the other one that I used on one of my watercolour strips was some of these elements. I think it was from this row. And I think this is Irresistible Prints again in Etsy. Again, really affordable images if that's what you want to do. The labels came from a set. This was the page that I cut up. This is really random colour labels. And I love from the set, again, it's Tracy Fox, the uh, sort of vanilla background and the bold black font that you see here. Lots of different fonts and just the sorts of things that you might find as well on book pages. So those are some affordable suggestions. I don't make digitals, I actually don't know how to. So I'm completely incentivized to go and find the most beautiful, useful, and let's say affordable images for our project. So that's really what I want to share with you today. Let, please let me know if that's helpful because I, I want to bring value, I want to really help. I like using digitals sometimes in my projects, I like doing things with just book pages too, but if this helps you, I would love to know and I can sort of make suggestions as we move forward with other projects if you want. So the next step in the process for this one is to add our fast flow stitching. And I thought what I would do is give you three different sort of tips and suggestions using the ones I've already made. So here they are laid out. Let's maybe take the classic orange and green one. This was the one I actually did first and you can see I used bugs but the same principles of text and labels and book pages down the sides. For the sewing I really enjoyed going up and down a few times making the stitching very wiggly because we are doing fast flow stitching which is basically stitching with no particular rules in mind, not following a straight line and just going for it and having fun. So that's what this collaboration is all about. So I've integrated some zigzags on this one. That seemed to go very well with the bugs there. In fact, you can see I've actually stamped and painted a ladybird or a ladybug there. On the purple one, so this one in the middle, I've retained extra texture by letting the spare threads at the end when I was sewing just tuck under 
some of the running stitch. I've added some very pretty stags to this one. I've gone up and down a few times but again as you can see it's all a li little bit sort of wavy and flowy and that was very enjoyable. So I've kept some threads at the end there as well. So it doesn't have to be something that's very untidy. I quite like it untidy. And for the butterfly one, so the one with teal, I've used the sewing to go and add extra body to the sort of abdomen of each of the butterflies. So I've gone up and down a few times as I have on the others, but without being too precise, as you can see here, what I've done is I've got stitches coming out and I just think that's, that's super pretty, it adds texture. So, oh, there's some of the ribbon, I didn't add that, did I? But I think that works very well with the, the butterfly watercolour strip as well. So the, for each of them, add whatever stitches you want, go for it. If you haven't got a sewing machine, but you still want to do this, maybe think about adding some faux stitches, just get a gel pen and run up and down and add some extra te texture that way. I think they'll be really pretty. And to bring it all together, I splat it with paint using the colours that are in our chosen colour palette. And then I go back to some tiny little words. So perfect these would be from a book page. And I just add a few of these on top. And the reason I do it is these are not splattered. They're going over some of the stitches and it adds a bit more layers and a, a little bit more texture. And if you want to, at this stage, you could take an ink pad if you want to, or a paint stick, and maybe just with a tiny bit of my now rather grubby water. I don't really want the green, I might do it with the brown. I would just put my finger on the end of that and daub if you want it to look either a bit more grungy or fill in any of those white gaps. Remember I said we didn't have anything to worry about because we can add some of that later and also is a gratuitous excuse just to do a bit of finger painting. If you like playing with colour and decorating journals then check out this video here where I decorate a junk journal. I hope to see you soon.